Welcome. I'll change language uh, because I'm used to give presentation in English. What I'd like to do is to tell you how we successfully innovate and apply biotechnology to improve the quality of our main raw material barley and thereby improve the quality of our beers. Unfortunately, like people, beer ages over time. And during the aging process, beers can develop undesirable tastes and aromas that are not well appreciated by the consumer. Notably, in the beginning of this process, it's a cardboard type of flavor, whereas later on, it's more the berry and red fruit type of flavors that will appear. And like people try to battle their aging by investing in cosmetics, brewers try to do the same by investing in state-of-the-art technology and strict quality control. However, both realize the true solution is in their genes. Genes in men regulate their aging process. Genes in our body regulate the formation of all desirable and undesirable components that end up in our brewing kettle and eventually in our beers. So, making an improvement is looking at barley genes and basically plant breeding, not necessarily a brewer's job. However, brewing barley represents only 1% of the total cereal crop in this world. And therefore, breeders are not really interested in brewing barley. They will get a return from wheat, rice, and maize. The solution Two quality-minded brewers created their own research project on barley genetics. So the first thing we did in the first assignment we got is, please get rid of the carton of flavor in our beers. And what we discovered was a barley line with a slight change in one of the genes called a mutation. And this change should block the formation of the cardboard flavor. And for all kinds of technical reasons, we had to call it a null logs barley mutant, or in short, a null logs barley. And it works. If you take this barley on full production scale, you produce a beer out of it, you store it at 30 degrees centigrade, you will see that the orange line will stay well below the red line, indicating the level at which a consumer can taste the cardboard flavor. So beer stays stable for one year up to 30 degrees. More importantly, can you taste it? And yes, you can. Consistently, we find better taste test score for the beer produced of this new type of barley. And what's very interesting, taste test score have a very big impact in our company, as they are aligned with key performance indicators of general managers and brewery managers. It will surely facilitate the introduction of this material. On top of the freshness, surprisingly, we found better foam as well also a clear consumer benefit. So two main competitive advantages which we wanted to protect. And normally you protect by patents on your product. In this case, to maintain exclusivity, we also took patents on the raw material. Because normal breeding rights in plant varieties will not give you the guarantee and the control desired in the agricultural part of the supply chain. So having this in place, the next question is, what's the cost for the brewery? Well, if the barley is competitive yield-wise and quality-wise with normal barley, there should not be any increase in your cost of raw material. And if it's a conventional barley as it is, processing will be the same and recipes don't need to be changed. So there's no additional investment whatsoever. Then the biggest battle we had to fight is secure availability. Where we buy normally barley malt in an open market, in order to maintain our control and exclusivity, we had to change the supply, system, supply chain in a closed system. That means you have to talk with all your partners, and they are really interested if you only pay a slight premium. Well, probably you can afford it at the startup of the project when quantities are really low, but it becomes a pain in the neck if it's really normal production. And if it's really normal production, it should be at normal prices and normal procedures. The other thing we had to do is to have a forecast for two years, because we need one year for seed production and one year to grow the barley. And we have all the systems now in place to cover the needs by 2011 for the whole Heineken brand. So basically, we developed a new barley, we secured exclusivity, and we didn't add any cost to the whole supply chain.
Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Albert.